Hi, I'm James Kelly, and today I will be discussing Chapter 7, Jamming Media and Popular Culture. There are lots of key terms to identify, so let's go through these before we get into our lesson. The first one is media, which are the modes, means, or channels through which messages are communicated. Network media, media such as the World Wide Web, or as you probably know as the Internet, which connects multiple points to other multiple points in addition to serving interpersonal and mass media functions. Cultural forms, the product's format, which could be newscasts, sitcoms, action dramas, thrillers, etc., as well as structures, languages, and narrative styles that are produced when media technologies and institutions come together. Popular culture, systems and artifacts that the general populace or broad masses within a society share or about which mo most people have some understanding of. Folk culture, localized cultural practices that are enacted for the sole purpose of people within a particular place. Culturite industry, industries that mass produce standardized cultural goods, such as the Disney Corporation, Viacom, Warner Brothers, you name it. Cultural corruption, the perceived and experienced alteration of a culture in a negative or detrimental manner through the influence of other cultures. Cultural homogenization, the convergence towards common cultural values and practices as a result of global integration. Continuing on to more, cultural imperialism, the domination of one culture over others through cultural forms such as popular culture, media, and cultural products. Fragma fragmigration, the dual and simultaneous dynamic of integration and fragmentation combined that is emerged in the context of globalization. Telenovelas, which is Latin for television soap operas, which are widely used in South America and other Latin countries. Decoding, the active, interpretive, and sense-making processes of audiences. Encoding, the construction of mass-mediated meeting by cultural industries. Dominant reading, a situation where the reader shares the meanings that are encoded in the text and accepts the preferred reading, which generally naturalizes and reinforces the dominant ideologies. Negotiated meeting, when the, when the reader or viewer generally shares the codes and preferred meanings of texts, but also may resist and modify the encoded meaning based on his or her personality, interests, and experiences, resulting in a contradictory reading of the text. Oppositional reading, when the social position of the viewer or reader of the text places them in opposition to the dominant code and preferred reading of the popular culture text. Over the last few, alternative or independent media. Media practices that fall outside of or are independent from the mainstream corporate owned and controlled mass media. Citizen or participatory media. Participatory media, my bad. Media texts created by average citizens who are not affiliated with mainstream corporate media outlets. YouTube, blogs, Tumblr, blogs, podcasts, and digital storytelling. And then finally, cultural jamming. The act of altering or transforming mass media and popular culture forms into messages or commentary about itself. For this presentation, I'm going to start off with my outside source. So a lot of you can probably remember that back in 2016, former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick refused to stand for the national anthem because he thought the treatment of minorities was unfair. He thought this was means of peaceful protest but people ridiculed him highly for it. However, not all people ridiculed him, as his then-team, the 49ers, had this to say. It is an opportunity to honor our country and reflect on the great liberties we are afforded as its citizens. In respecting such American principles as freedom of religion and freedom of expression, we recognize the right of an individual to choose to participate, or not, in our celebration of the National Anthem. So standing for the National Anthem is shown as a sign of respect, as, as means of popular acts. And this is uh, especially true for sporting events. However, since he did not do this and since his career was already dwindling, he had been benched and, and had lost the respect of many San Francisco fans, he was ridiculed even more after this. And possibly because of his dwindling career and this whole controversial uh, act of peaceful protest, Kaepernick is still a free agent and after being waived nearly two years ago, he has still not been selected. 
The media brings together technologies, institutions, and cultural forms to create and demonstrate mean-making products that reflect, construct, and reinforce cultural values. A good example of this is social media and computers and smartphones becoming a large source of entertainment in America and now the rest of the world. Popular culture is a system that most people within a certain region or society can relate to. And for us in America, it's mostly celebrities, sports, video games, music, and the musicians. Um, it can range from religious rituals, in our case, uh, mostly Christianity, fashion, social causes such as uh, American Cancer Society doing Relay for Life in honor of the cancer victims, and uh, cultural identities. Folk culture relates to the uh, traditions that we're taught in an early age, and the best examples of these are holidays. In America, we celebrate Halloween by dressing up in spooky costumes. We celebrate Valentine's Day as a day of appreciation towards our loved ones and our significant others if we're in a relationship, and Thanksgiving as we reflect on the things that we're blessed with. Another example in Mexico is the 15th birthday being very significant, and it's also known as the quinceañera. And um, as I've included in one of the pictures, they often um, choose special dresses to celebrate. And also Cinco de Mayo, which is a celebration of freedom. Uh, the culture industry includes companies that mass produce standardized goods and cultural identity, such as Disney, Warner Brothers, Viacom, just to name a few. However, there is a negative notion towards the major cultural industrial companies, because they might teach us to be more passive consumers and not make us think critically. And the average American consumes an incredible 11 hours of media on their smartphones, computers, radio, and through the culture industries like Disney. So it's not very hard to manipulate a person just to go by the standards and suggest that they suggest instead of thinking outside the box and try to form their own perspective. And that is a plague that is really coming back to haunt us. American films, music, and television are the main forms of entertainment not only in the U.S., but also worldwide. Since globalization has spread ideas from every country to every country, everyone picks up something different. However, the U.S. is particularly dominant in the entertainment industry. In fact, over 70% of American film revenue is generated through sales outside the United States. Unfortunately, this can lead to cultural corruption. With the U.S. pop culture being so dominant glo globally, there may be changes, losses, or undermining of national and local practices, values, and identities that make other countries unique than us. Some countries, such as China, have even banned U.S. film, music, and television shows because the Chinese government fears that the U.S. is too culturally dominant and cultural hegemony and imperialism might take place. It's good that our sources of entertainment have spread worldwide through the process of globalization, but other countries should take it only in moderation, or they may become too consumed in the content. Uh, U.S. entertainment has disrupted cultural norms in other countries by manipulating them to abide by American culture while, maintaining, while not maintaining the distinct identities of their own culture, and that is a problem that is plaguing many countries. In three steps, we can resist and recreate media and popular culture. The first step is to increase awareness of the matter. We need to make ourselves consciously be aware of the role of the media and the pop culture, and the roles that they play in shaping our views and in our society. They can have negative effects, such as normalizing dominant ideologies and portraying stereotypes, which isn't healthy as we're trying to mix different cultures and groups of people through the process of globalization. The second step is to take informed action. We have options as to how we can interpret things that we hear, and we have to think more critically about what we're shown from the media and pop culture. We need to try and form alternative media that steers away from the corporate-controlled mass media and provide other possible explanations for certain issues and events that take place. If we continue to believe the same or very similar stories and not try to challenge the dominant perspectives of events and issues, we only limit ourselves as to what something can mean. And lastly, as an average citizen, we should try to make our voices heard by commenting on our own opinions on certain events and issues, and not just paying attention to what the popular media says. And this is known as cultural jamming. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the presentation, and I will also be posting a link to my insight source so you guys can take a look at that if you guys are interested. But other than that, thank you very much, and until next time, I'll see you later.